and welcome to Best Tech on Ghana Web TV. I am Ernestina Sewa Asante. Today's edition features a mobile application designed to collect data from business operators and predict consumer sentiment. This app also helps business owners to make more informed decisions to satisfy customers. My colleague, Maoli Aholumega, has more. Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Bistech on Ghana Web TV. On this edition, I'll be speaking with a young man who's been able to develop a web application that allows business owners to know what, how their customers are feeling, amongst other things. Before I introduce my guest, I'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Welcome back from that break on Bistech. My guest is Kwesi Kofi, the Chief Executive Officer for DataWare. Kwesi, welcome to Bistech. How thank are you? you? Thank you. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Good to see you again. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, I understand you have a web application that allows you to know how your customers are feeling right. about the product and services. Right. What went into the idea of developing this web application? And what exactly is the whole application about? Okay, so um, DataWare is a big data AI firm. Mm. So our core mandate is to help companies understand their customers and their operations better. Mm. So in developing the platform, which we call Lucent, by the way. Lucent. Lucent. Lucent, okay. Yeah. So Lucent essentially means that anything that gives off light. Mm. So in developing the application, we're hoping that by customers using the platform, they were able to shine some light into their data, mm. be it about their customers or about the business itself. Mm. So Lucent has three modules. Okay. So we have the customer analytics, the business intelligence, okay. and then we have the risk 360. Okay. So the business intelligence, essentially, what that does is that it helps customers or our customers get reports about how their business is performing. Mm. So. I'll give an example. If you're a retail firm, how many products have been sold, how many new customers you have, how many returns you have, you can automate that process. A lot of businesses do that manually. Mm. So they'll have an Excel sheet, they'll import maybe the data from some software somewhere, and they input it and then prepare management reports. Okay. So for any business, it might take them between a day or two to prepare those reports for management. The problem with that is that that is not instant, that's not real time. So the tool that we have developed called the Lucent BI, what that does is it plugs into all of these data sources and then gives a live dashboard okay. so that a manager sitting anywhere in a part of the world can know how the business is performing in mm. real time. So that's for the BI. Now, the customer analytics takes us a step further. So the BI part is a, the first part of a, you know, data analytics, which is more about statistics, which is more the about descriptive and, okay. and reports and things mm. like that. Customer analytics leverages on machine learning yeah. or artificial intelligence. So what that does is that it enables you to understand your customers better, gives you deeper insights. So with features as some, with something like um, which customers are likely to leave. So as a business, the cost of acquiring a new customer is way higher, mm. some, up to five times more than what you spend if you wanted to retain one. So it's always prudent to be able to predict which customers are likely to leave. Mm. So you can have intervention programs to retain them, maybe offer them discounts or give them additional you know, promotions or things like that mm. to reactivate them. Okay. And a lot of companies are not leveraging the data to be able to do this. Mm. I'll give you an example. Sometime about a couple of weeks ago, I saw an ad in the Daily Graphic and this was a bank which was advertising to customers who had left their account dormant mm. to come and then reactivate. Okay. But the bank has this information, so this is something that they should be able to tell ahead of time many people, and prevent yeah. that from happening. Mm -hmm. So it was, you know, it was a very a big shock to me. But mm -hmm. then again, it's a growing industry, so a lot of companies are beginning to learn some of the advantages. 
Okay. Now with the 360, which is the last part, what it does is it helps businesses identify risk elements. So okay. if you're a financial service provider and you are giving out loans, you want to be able to predict who is likely to default. Now how the Lucent works is that it takes past data and we build AI models that we train we train the AI models with the past data so it is aware of the environment of that particular business. Mm. So it's able to predict. So based on past behaviors of particular clients with particular traits, if you bring in a new customer with a similar trait, you can be able to predict that this customer is also likely to default or things like that. So mm. essentially, that's what the Lucent platform is okay. about. So the Lucent platform, it's more, can I say, it's, a, it's predicting customer behavior. Right. right. So, what was that key thing that you found out? You've been operating the the web, the web app has been working for some time. Yeah. What, what's the one key thing that you've noticed about the behaviors of the customers? Mm. So, um, well, the thing is that for every business, customers behave differently. Mm. It depends on one the kind of business, the kind of industry. Uh, for some businesses, it's very easy to lose a customer because there are a lot of you know alternatives. And so what we've always advised is that um, with these AI models that are uh, available for use, businesses should be able to have a data sets, a large enough data sets to train these models so that the model can predict more efficiently or more effectively, mm. more accurately and um, based on past you know, data. Mm. So behavior is, is essentially different, different. Yeah, when it comes to okay. you know, different customers. Right. So a retail uh, business will have customers behaving differently from maybe a telco or a financial service provider or things like that. Okay. Chrissy, I've been learning quite a lot from you. I'll just take a quick break, we'll be right back. I've been speaking with Chrissy Kofi, the Chief Executive Officer for Dataware, and they've developed a web application that allows companies to predict customer sentiment about the services and products that they are offering. I'll take a quick break, we'll be right back. Welcome back from that break on Best Tech. I've been speaking with Kwesi Kofi, the Chief Executive Officer of Data, where we've been talking about the web application that they have developed which is helping companies to predict customer sentiment about the products and services they are offering. Kofi, I was, Kofi, I've been learning quite a lot from you. I want to yeah. come down to the type of businesses that are using this platform. Yeah. We've been running for some time now. Yeah. What are those companies looking, looking out for? Okay, mm. so um, the key thing about the platform is that it relies on data. Okay. So for Industries that do not generate a lot of data, they, may, they might struggle mm. using the platform. Um, so from our time in the industry, we realized that a lot of the industries that benefit the most are companies in the financial services, mm. companies in the retail business, companies in health and education. There are some use cases that they can rely on, mm. but that there's a, there's a, that's a whole, a whole, a, a whole <laughs> yeah. a new conversation uh, yeah. because of you know um, the, the stage I hope the industry is mm. at. Um, now, like I said, the Lucent platform relies on data, mm. so these companies have to have you know they have to have matured sure. okay. in terms of their IT architecture because mm. we're talking about digital data. Yeah, right. They are. We have a partner called Think Data, Think data. that we've teamed up with to help companies that do not um, have digital infrastructure mm. to move from fiscal or paper assets mm. to you know, digital, to digital, right. digital assets so that they can transfer, transfer their information or data from the fiscal form to the digital form. Mm. And then we, we can do the analytics on that. Mm. So companies must begin to look into the future because the future is data. Mm. Not even the future, data is already here. It's already here. <laughs> so we are living I mean, in it right now. We are living now. in that age now. We are mm. living in the information age, industry 4.0. So a lot of these companies need to begin to think about their data strategy, how mm. they're going to leverage data to compete. Mm. Um, what I've also realized is that for these medium-sized companies, this is the way that they can compete with the big boys. Mm. Right? Understand your customers better deliver personalization at scale mm. so that every individual customer of yours 
feels special because you know exactly what they did mm. and can deliver that instead of having a one size fits all, mm. right? So once you're able to deliver that experience to the customer, then you have become a better option and you're able to compete with the big boys who have you know, mm. a, a lot of funding and can you know, try other things. Okay. Medium to small size businesses cannot experiment. Mm. You know? One experiment gone wrong yeah. can, can, <laughs> can collapse the, the country. Company, yeah. So yeah, data is a way that all of these businesses can compete. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so we're wrapping up. I want to come down quickly to artificial intelligence. I'm sure you'd have to deploy that mm. some form of AI in, yeah. the, in, the, in, the, in the Lucent Platform. as well. Um, mm. How, how is artificial intelligence helping you use this app? Right. Mm. So artificial intelligence has a lot of use cases. Mm. And, and artificial intelligence is an umbrella term that you know, covers a lot of things. Okay. For now, the part of artificial intelligence that is gaining the most traction is machine learning. Mm. So what machine learning does essentially is pick past data, mm. learn from that, and be able to predict future happenings. Mm. So typical applications of artificial intelligence are you know, your virtual assistant, your mm. Siri, your Google assistant, and when you have the artificial, the self-driving vehicles. Mm. So how these are built is that you take past data of you know, driving experience. If you are going at this speed, as a car, you'll be this distance ahead of you. When do you apply your brakes? Mm. So it's all about decision making. Mm. Yes. All right. So, yeah, so Kusi, we are wrapping up. I want to find out from you, why should up and coming businesses and already existing businesses mm -hmm. use this web application? What are right. the benefits of using this application? Okay. So, um, you see, data is a very expensive uh, endeavor. If you want to go into, into that space, if you're a business and you want to begin to leverage your data, depending on how far you've gone, there's a lot of you know, things that has to be done. Mm. When it, come, when it comes to strategy. Now, beyond just having the software to be able to do this, you, there has to be a behavioral change of your team, mm. right? We need to begin to move from making decisions based on intuition or gut feeling mm. to making data back decisions. So that is a lifestyle change. Mm. So beyond just buying the software, there is the element of changing the behavior of your team in mm. how they make decisions. Mm. Now, this has become very expensive for small and medium-sized business mm. to do, to embark on data projects because there are a lot of licenses for software that you need yeah, to get. You have to go through like a lot that. of processes. A lot of processes. Mm. What Lucent does, right, is a subscription-based model. Okay. So you pay on a monthly or annual or on a quarterly basis. The advantage with the Lucent platform is that it's, it's a self-help tool. Okay. So very intuitive user interface, there are docs that helps you in how to build a model, how mm. to deploy the model, mm. how to do the prediction, mm. and it's very easy to use. Okay. So any business can set up and begin to, you know, get deeper insights about their customers once they have the data sets available. Okay. All right. Kosi, thank you so much. I've been speaking with Kwesi Kofi, the Chief Executive Officer for Data Aware, and we've been talking about a web application that is helping business owners to predict and know their customer sentiment about the product and services that they are offering. He's been my guest on this week's edition of BizTech. My name is Malia Holmeka. Many thanks for watching. Thank you, Maulia Holumega, for that report. Up next is Biz Headlines. <laughs>to our very first story the world bank country director for ghana pierre laporte has noted that ghana needs to urgently find solutions to its current problems the country director said that depreciation cd and the increase in inflation puts the country at a high risk he said if no urgent measures are taken domestic debt structuring will be difficult for the country he also explained that since banks depend on government bonds and securities, a further dip in the economy's capital adequacy will have grave effects on the country. The Sunyani Airport has witnessed its first commercial flight after seven years of closure. 
This happened during the Transport Minister's commissioning of the first flight to start its operation in the Bono region. During the occasion, the Minister of Transport, Kweku Esiama, stated that those in the Bono region will support the aviation industry by helping the business of flight to continue working to serve the region. He said the second phase of the Sunyani Airport will soon commence depending on how the people of Bono, Bono East and Ahafo patronize flights that use the airport. He therefore advised the aviation industry to work diligently to support and make sure people will love their hospitality. He urged industry players to also help in the reductions of commercial flight tickets fees to encourage more people in the region to board flights to other parts of the country. President Nanado Dankwa Ekufuado has reiterated the impact of the Russia-Ukraine war on global economies, especially on African countries. The president holds that the war we started in February this year aggravated an already precarious situation for African economies that were starting all over to recover from the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. President Ekufuado said the war had direct impact on Africa, especially in the area of food supply, triggering importantly inflation. On the specific case of the Russian invasion, even though Moscow insists it was a military operation, President Ekufuado said, as we grappled with these economic challenges, Russia's evasion of Ukraine burst upon us, aggravating an already difficult situation. It is not just the dismay that we feel at seeing such deliberate devastation of cities and towns in Europe in the year 2022. We are feeling this war directly in our lives in Africa. The Ghana Statistical Service has said the economy recorded an expansion of 4.8% in the second quarter of 2022. This was higher than the growth rate of 3.4%, which was recorded in the first quarter of the year. The Ghana Statistical Service, in its latest data, attributed the country's manufacturing crops and cocoa, mining and querying, information and communication, and education subsectors as the main drivers for growth. It added that the services sector, which is a key driver, recorded an expansion of 5.2%, which is more than the national average. This was, however, followed by agriculture, which recorded 4.6%, whilst the services sector recorded 4.4% growth rate. In addition to this, the GSS said some nine subsectors within the services sector all experienced significant growth rates. In terms of subsectors that witnessed contraction, real estate and professional administrative and support were the notable sectors. Also, some three subsectors within the agricultural industry or sector recorded an expansion during the period. These were the fishing and livestock, crop and cocoa. The data also showed the forestry and logging sectors recorded a contraction in their growth rate of negative 0.2%. The GSS data showed that services sector continued to be the largest sector of the Ghanaian economy, which recorded an expansion in the second quarter of 2022. The sector recorded a gross share of 45.8% of gross domestic product. A senior director at ratings agency Fitch, Mahin, has said Ghana faces a possible debt default. He explained that banks in Ghana have high dependence on government securities. Therefore, any debt distress the government faces will have dire effects on the sustainability of banks. According to Reuters, Mahin made the comments at a press briefing on September 21st. He also noted that in case of debt distress, the banking sector will not be the only affected sector. In August this year, ratings agency downgraded Ghana's credit worthiness status to junk. This has affected the country's ability to secure credit facilities 
from the global market. Inflation has skyrocketed to an all-time high of 33.9%. The CD continues to depreciate against major trading currencies. Meanwhile, three Ghanaian banks have also been downgraded by Fitch. <music> That's all for today. Thank you very much for joining us on today's edition of Bistec on Ghana Web TV. Bistec airs every Friday on the same platform. I am Ernestina Sewa Asante. But before we go, do log on to www.ghanaweb.com for more stories. Do well to follow us on all social media platforms on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at the Ghana Web. On YouTube, Ghana Web TV. Once again, I am Ernestina Sewa Asante. Do have a lovely weekend. <music>